Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I want to do a video about sports photography tips for beginners. In this video I'm going to keep it fairly quick and simple and straightforward and hopefully give you some takeaways to go away with and practice yourself or use yourself and see if it helps you, see if it improves what you do um, and let me know how they go in the comments below. Okay, number one, know your settings. Now I spoke about in a video just this last week when I was talking about camera settings in sports photography, how different settings can change the photos that you are taking when covering action sports. Feel free to go and check that video out once you've finished this one, obviously. Um, but basically don't be put off by the complication of camera settings if you're quite new to it and you know you find exposure triangles and all this type of thing quite intimidating. Don't be put off by it. It's a lot simpler once you get familiar with it. And I know that sounds obvious, but please go and play with your camera, get to know your settings and how they impact the photos you're taking. Put simply, in action sports, we want a higher shutter speed. My starting point is one one thousandth of a second, and this is because you can guarantee it will freeze that action in a majority of circumstances and give you a nice sharp photo, a nice frozen frame of that action sport. Motorsport, you might need to go a little bit higher depending on the look you're going for. But with a higher shutter speed, as we know, um, you're going to need to let more light into the camera because the higher shutter speed, the less light gets in your camera that equals a darker photo. So two ways we let more light in, as I discussed in great detail in my settings video last week. Tip two is it get low. So often in sports photography, I have seen guys standing up. When I started out, I literally stood on a hill behind the goal. Once I had a hill, it was more of a mound. I shot a soccer game, stood on a mound, and I really excitedly sent my photos to quite a seasoned pro and said, look how well I captured this goal. He sent back, can't see any emotion on it. Why? Because I'd shot too high. He'd instantly said it was too high. So whenever I go and shoot soccer, I've done the same for um, a ton of sports, not as low needed for cricket, but I've shot cricket kind of sitting on quite a low stool. Rugby the same, NFL football in America, probably the same. Hockey, even though you've got those screens in ice hockey, you're still probably head height or chest height, if not a touch lower. And why we say get low, and you see sports folks with around pictures if you're watching soccer, for example, the reason we say get low is because that's where the action is. If you're sat higher, so occasionally at a World Cup you'll see some photographers up high, which while that's great every now and then, what you're going to get if you're high up is you're going to get the tops of people's heads, which is no good when you're trying to capture action shots and you're trying to capture emotion and determination of people elbowing people out the way and tackling and catching balls and whatever. So you need to get right down low because that is where the ball is in soccer. That is where if you're going for a touchdown in NFL or if you're trying to dodge a tackle or whatever, you're, you're looking low or you're getting low um, to the floor. Athletics, getting low, shooting up, you see the focus of the runner. So get as low as you can, invest in a nice stool that is really short and get you nice and low down so you can get a great angle of these shots. And when I talk about stools, by the way, you can get some here in the UK for four or five pounds from bargain shops like Rightway and uh, B&M and they may be Northern stores, I don't know, but stores like that kind of really cheap bargain type shops. In the US, I've seen them in Walmart, I've seen them in, I think, Dollar Tree as well. So plenty of cheap shops have these plastic stools that allow you to get right down low and get a better sports photo. Number three, crop tightly. There is nothing worse than um, seeing a sports photo that has a ton of space around the outside. Unless it's done for effect or artistic merit, when it's not done, as if someone's shooting to goal or if someone's kind of celebrating really passionately or two players are coming together in whatever the sport, what you don't want is a load of space around the outside because the focus of that photo, the subject of that photo, what is making that photo interesting, perhaps even sellable from an agency or newspaper perspective, is a subject, it's all in the middle. So crop it. And this is a great tool to use as well if you've maybe shot off center or you wanna crop a flailing arm in the edge of frame, get in Lightroom, get in Photoshop, whatever you use and crop that photo nice and tight because what you're doing is you're keeping that, that action shot front and center, really tight in the frame and making sure people's attentions aren't diverted away. So crop tight, 
keep it nice and close and keep the action at the forefront of the shot you've taken. Number four, keep the ball in shot. This is a lesson I didn't learn until probably three years into photography. I was shooting for an agency and read their style guide of what the photos they want or, or what their, their standards and expectations were. And one of the things they said was don't submit a photo to us if there isn't a ball in shot. And I'd been doing this for three years, not for an agency, for other clients, hadn't thought twice about it. But actually, it's a great point. Now when I look at an action sports photo, again, I think of soccer uh, primarily, most sports will be the same that have got a ball involved. If you've got two footballers tackling each other or running next to each other and that ball's just gone out of frame, it's just out of shot, it looks like they're dancing. They could be doing anything at all, um, but it loses a bit of context often if that ball isn't in shot. So get a better shot, leave the ball in it. Number five, head on. Again, so many photos in my early days I took from behind, from the side, um, as players or, or athletes were running away from me or running adjacent to me. And this is fine, but actually they're not very good photos because you need the facial expressions, the front of the kit, the direction, the headed, where the balls are. All of those things are what make an action photo good. So don't submit photos like, or don't include in your best edit photos where you've got the backs of players. You might have athletes that are kind of, you know, you shot on an angle from the side or maybe slightly from behind them they don't look great always try and get front on get head on to your subject and get them coming towards you if possible that is what's going to make the best photo this is why often a lot of photographers in soccer and football will sit either side behind the goal because if you're getting that shot uh, well there's two reasons first if you're getting that shot towards goal um, it looks a hell of a lot better if the player might be facing you and shooting out a frame rather than you got a side on of them shooting something you, you can't see you shooting towards either. So let's get head on. Let's keep all the emphasis on the subject and capture the emotion, capture the action uh, in that frame. Number six, straighten up. This is a really simple one to achieve. Basically use your crop tool, whether it's, I said Photoshop or Lightroom, and just spend 30 seconds tilting that image so it's straight. Really simple, look for either vertical points of interest in the photo, it could be an advertising hoarding or a floodlight or a goal post. Use that as your, your guide for that to be perfectly vertical. Alternatively, use your horizon line. It could be the edge of a pitch, it could be, it could be the edge of an ocean, depending on what you're shooting, an edge of a swimming pool, an edge of a basketball court. Look for a horizon line that should be horizontal and just tweak your photo and straighten it up like that. What we don't want is to see players running up a hill that doesn't actually exist, that only exists in the crop that you've done. And I've tried to drop a couple of perhaps made up examples that I've shot in here. Number seven is know your storylines. And this is something I kind of figured out for myself pretty early. Now I shoot, as you probably gathered, mostly football, soccer here in the UK. And I'm a massive football fan. I love it, I, I watch it, I read about it, I go to games, I used to play it. So I know all the stories, I try to pride myself because it's an interest to me, it's a hobby, so it's in my best interest to know. As a photographer, the number of shots I've got, because I know this player on the opposition team is playing his 400th career game today, or if that guy comes on here, this is his first game for two years because of a what was thought to be a career-ending injury. If they score this goal, or if they win this game today, they're getting promoted. If they lose this game, that manager could be sacked, so I best get some shots to that manager before the game kicks off. I could get that manager as he's standing on the touchline like that. Know your story, whatever the sport, whatever you're shooting, do a bit of research beforehand. Know which players or which athletes are involved, what the potential outcomes and storylines are, what the history is, if there's any bad blood between any players or teams or clubs, Try and know all of that before you turn up, because you know what? If that came to a drab nil-nil draw, or if a flare point, a flash point does happen, that might be your image that sells, or that might be your image that gets more traction on social media, or whatever your aim for shooting is. So try and know your stories, and that counts right down to grassroots level, by the way. Um, regional football here in the northwest of the UK, only this summer there was a load of players, probably four or five I read, that were really at one point quite prominent, either Premier League or Football League Championship level players who re-signed for home team clubs, now they're in their late 30s or 40s. 
Again, that's a story if you're shooting at that level, seeing that guy play his first game outside of professional football for, for 20 years, that is a story that a local paper might be interested in. There's a ton of things like that. As a player at your local grassroots team, maybe just had a, a trial at a, a big team. Is he going to college next year here at this big, big sports um, college with a, with a scholarship on hand? All these types of stories, whatever level you're shooting, try and know them, try and know who's involved and what those potential storylines are. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and drop any comments or questions below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching.